This is a short video on antidepressants and the different classes that antidepressants can be categorized into. So here is a classic picture of a guy with depression and antidepressants obviously reduce or eliminate that depression or that's the goal of them. Let's start with the MAO inhibitors, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors. These are tranylcypramine, phenylzine, isocarboxazid, and selegiline. These are the four monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Mechanism of action for these are that they inhibit monoamine oxidase, as the name implies, and monoamine oxidase breaks down the monoamine neurotransmitters, which are serotonin, which is 5-HT, dopamine, and norepinephrine. So the monoamine oxidase inhibitors allow the monoamine neurotransmitters to kind of exist longer, it stops the breakdown of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. These are the first-line treatments for atypical depression. They're also used for anxiety and major depressive disorder after other treatments fail. Side effects here are orthostatic hypertension, sedation, and sexual dysfunction, which includes uh, being unable to orgasm and erectile dysfunction. They can also cause serotonin syndrome, which is diarrhea, restlessness, hyperreflexia, fever, rigidity, um, and this usually comes about when monoamine oxidase inhibitors are combined with other serotonergic agents, with other drugs that increase serotonin levels in the body, many of which are listed on the left there in the other classes of antidepressants. They, th these can also cause hypertensive crisis um, when you administer uh, monoamine oxidase in a person who has uh, who eats a lot of tyramine containing foods um, this includes some aged meats some cheeses some chocolates um, and that's because tyramine is also broken down by monoamine oxidase so if you have monoamine oxidase inhibitors and too much tyramine in your body um, it can cause a toxicity um, that includes vasoconstriction elevated blood pressure nausea vomiting headache and sweating Next, we have the SSRIs, very commonly used, the Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. These include fluoxetine, paroxetine, sertraline, citalopram, escitalopram, and fluvoxamine. Mechanism of action here, um, kind of hard to read because the, the slide is a bit messed up, but they block the presynaptic neuron, the, sorry, they block the presynaptic neuron from absorbing serotonin from the synapse. So they selectively inhibit the presynaptic neuron from reabsorbing serotonin. <clears throat> they are exactly as the name implies, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And this effectively increases serotonin levels in the synapse. It's worth noting that fluoxetine has the longest half-life and peroxetine and fluvoxamine have the shortest half-lives. These treat <clears throat> major depressive disorder, anxiety, and other related disorders. Some side effects here are GI symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and sexual symptoms, just like in the MAOI uh, drugs, and that, increase, that includes decreased libido, decreased ejaculation, and anorgasmia. There's also a risk of serotonin here, like many of the drugs. There's um, a risk of liver failure, because these undergo hepatic metabolism. <clears throat> Next, we have the SNRIs, the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. These include venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine, duloxetine, milnasopran, and levomilnasopran. Mechanism here is that these drugs block presynaptic neurons from absorbing serotonin and norepinephrine from the synapses, thus increasing the effectiveness of both of these neurotransmitters. So similar to SSRIs, but they add the additional blocking reuptake of norepinephrine. These also treat major depressive disorder. They can also be used for neuropathic pain and anxiety. Venlafaxine is specifically used for other disorders, including OCD, PTSD, and social anxiety. Side effects here are somewhat similar. Same GI side effects, same sex side effects. Uh, they can also cause sedation and hypertension. Always a risk of, hyper of serotonin syndrome as well, hepatic metabolism as well. Next are the tricyclic antidepressants. These are amitriptyline, nortriptyline, imipramine, desipramine, clomipramine, doxepin, and amoxepin. 
mechanism here are that these block serotonin and norepinephrine transporters and thus increasing their effectiveness in the synapse. So pretty similar mechanism of action to the SNRIs. They both deal with the two neurotransmitters, serotonin and norepinephrine. Um, the mechanism is slightly different. SNRIs block the reuptake and tricyclic antidepressant block transporters that would otherwise remove serotonin and norepinephrine from the synapse. So these, in addition to blocking serotonin and norepinephrine transporters, also block histamine and muscarinic transporters or receptors. So they also have antihistamine effects and anti-muscarinic effects. These also treat major depressive disorder, also used for neuropathic pain, and these are also used for headaches. Uh, specifically, some of them are used for migraine prophylaxis, uh, prophylaxis for headaches and migraines, yeah. Side effects here are anticholinergic because they block the muscarinic uh, receptor. So those are constipation, dry mouth, orthostatic hypertension, urinary retention, cardiovascular effects like tachycardia and prolonged QT. And there's also a risk of serotonin syndrome with these as well. Lastly, we have kind of four or five grab bag atypical antidepressants. Let's start with bupropion. This one inhibits dopamine and norepinephrine retake, uh, reuptake, and this is specifically used for seasonal affective disorder, and oftentimes bupropion is preferred for just general depression because it lacks the sexual side effects. Um, bupropion is also one of two drugs used for smoking cessation. Mirtazapine increases norepinephrine and 5-HT concentration. So this one causes cetacean and increased appetite. So in some patients that, <clears throat> in some patients that have problems sleeping or patients that have problems gain, gaining weight, you might prescribe mirtazapine to kind of combo their depression and their weight loss and their insomnia all at the same time. So you can kind of use the side effects of mirtazapine to kind of tailor your treatment to a patient who is too thin or isn't sleeping enough. Next is amoxapine, also increases norepinephrine and serotonin concentrations, uh, similar to mirtazapine, causes sedation, causes increased appetite and weight gain, uh, often used for patients who have trouble sleeping and trouble eating. Trazodone, this one increases the serotonergic effect via a complex kind of unknown mechanism. It causes sedation, so it's also used for insomnia. There is a risk of priaprism, and it does also cause nausea and postural hypotension. Lastly, Varenicline, which is a partial agonist for the nicotine cholinergic receptor. Um, it's also used for smoking cessation because it's a partial ag agonist for the nicotine receptors, and it can also cause trouble sleeping. So the two drugs used for smoking cessation that are also antidepressants are bupropion and varenicline. This has been a review of some classes of antidepressants and some details about them. I hope it was helpful.